It's been an incredible 25 years I, I, for me to follow this industry. Uh, I started up back in the day when IBM was still uh, making mainframes, uh, excited about it. Uh, I remember watching Microsoft as it went through its IPO uh, back in the 90s and visited them in the early days. And it's been just an amazing experience to watch this industry unfold uh, and literally explode over the last couple of decades. Um, I witnessed Netscape in the early days, the early days of Yahoo and the founding and the original business plan of eBay and watching the potential that digital transformation had at the time was incredibly exciting and watching it today being realized, uh, it's really one of the things that I can get some passion around. The Harvard Business School in Boston, USA was started in the year 1905 with 80 students enrolled in the world's first MBA program. Indeed, that business would be a worthwhile scientific subject to be studied was an innovative idea at the time. Harvard has since then always looked at the drivers of change in business and how business leaders create value with them. Today, the most remarkable driver of change is the digital revolution. Professor Dr. Marco Iancitti leads the digital initiative at the Harvard Business School. He will tell us how the digital revolution is changing our lives. So there's a long history to the, uh, to the uh, investment in uh, digital technology, information technology. Uh, in the global economy. Uh, over the last two, three decades, billions have been spent uh, on the automation of corporate functions, personal computers, now mobile technology. Uh, but in recent years, we feel like something really special is starting to happen. Really in the last two or three years, we feel like the process has really been accelerating. Over the last 10 years, uh, the pace of innovation with digital technology has been really accelerating. Uh, we saw it uh, during the internet boom in the 90s, uh, which was followed by a crash, by, uh, fueled by overinvestment and speculation. But uh, in the most recent period, um, the investment and impact of technology has become even more uh, interesting. And, and this time we believe that it's really here to stay. Uh, one of the things that really put uh, these kinds of investments on the map was the acquisition by Google of Nest. Uh, Nest was a company that made um, uh, uh, objects to regulate uh, the way that digital technology works inside the home, like thermostats. And uh, spending $3.2 billion on a thermostat company really gave everybody pause. Why would Google spend more than the value of the entire industry on a single company um, to try to uh, enable uh, an industry that appeared far outside of its own traditional core business? So the Google acquisition of Nest makes a lot more sense when we think of it as connecting the traditional digital, uh, the traditional thermostat business to the broader digital world of energy. The energy business as a whole is a six billion dollar business. That's a huge market. And if Google can take the information that comes out of the Nest devices and use it to influence uh, the decisions, say made by electric utility companies, and then send information back from the utility companies to optimize the behavior of consumers, that's worth a lot more than $3 billion that Google paid for it. Now there are three things about digital technology that make it unique and really useful uh, to open up the op business and opportunities for the modern economy. The first one is that the transmission of business technology is intrinsically error free, which means that I can take a signal that I create in Germany and transmit it to India and the signal will arrive in India exactly as it was created back in Germany. There's no loss, there's no friction, it's exactly reproduced as it was originally created. Analog technology cannot do that. Secondly, I can do this many, many times. There is no incremental loss or there is no degradation by repeating the signal or copying the signal over and over and over again as there will be with analog technology. In other words, if I can transmit the signal to one person, I can transmit it to a million people or a billion people. The third thing is that the marginal cost of the billionth user is zero. In other words, once I've invested in creating my network and I've invested in the initial technology, 
I can expand my network and scale my network and scale the connectivity to people and things uh, at zero incremental cost. That means that I can fight any traditional technology that has significant marginal cost and create a model that is inherently disruptive to traditional business. So the question that remains is why is this happening now? Why is it a big deal now? And why might it sustain itself this time, unlike the bubble burst back in the year 2000? And the reason is that now there is an incredible confluence of different really important trends. The first really important trend is that based on the three principles we just outlined, we can get information technology and digital connectivity just about everywhere to anything. Secondly, as a result of this, we see a little explosion in digitally connected people and digitally connected devices. Literally over the last few years and over the next few years, the number of connected things is going to increase tenfold, hundredfold, a thousandfold to essentially expand the number of connected things uh, by orders of magnitude. That's an incredible effect. On, on this plot, you can see on the vertical axis the number of interconnected devices and on the horizontal axis uh, time. And you can see that we're really living in a unique period in our history uh, as the explosion of connectivity is taking place. On the next plot, we see that there is also a unique trend in the availability of computing power. Uh, the buzzword cloud computing actually makes sense. There's reality behind this. In the cloud, or in a small number of organizations, we're concentrating uh, an enormous amount of computing power whose cost is basically given away uh, for free. The cost of computing power is literally approaching zero. And so we have all these different interconnected devices that are generating information uh, with essentially uh, zero cost to actually compute and analyze that information. On the plot, you see on the left, uh, you compare a different generation of technology. Uh, on, the, on the vertical side, you see the cost. On the horizontal side, uh, you see the, uh, the total scale. And cloud computing is, is fundamentally unique uh, because it is low cost to get in, uh, and it has low marginal cost uh, to develop more power. So there is no, uh, there is no cost to being small. Uh, IBM and the small startup have access to essentially the same computing power, which democratizes what you can do uh, with the information that comes out of all these connected devices. And the final trend, not surprising, out of all of this, uh, you are creating an enormous amount of data. You're literally starting to uh, measure data in zettabytes and in yottabytes, in thousands and millions and billions of gigabytes of information. Uh, which is creating, again, an unprecedented opportunity for doing analytics, for predicting things that we couldn't know before, for understanding things at a much deeper level of detail, which again is, is, uh, is creating opportunities for transforming business and transforming the way that life works. And this is what uh, Mark Andreessen means when he says the software is eating the world. Literally, these kinds of opportunities are cutting across every industry, every traditional industry, every new industry that is being created by connecting previously disconnected uh, business components. It's changing the oil and gas industry, it's changing the financial services industry, it's changing the automotive sector, uh, it's changing the thermostat and home uh, heating industry, uh, it's changing the repair industry. <laughs> it's really cutting across every environment that we know and understand. The implication of this digital transformation are being felt uh, across every space and every level uh, of analysis. They're felt in the way that we each do our work uh, and we connect with our friends and we connect with our families. They're felt in how organizations are run and the qualities that leaders and managers need to have to run and understand their businesses. And it's felt at the level of society and we see literally the impact that these technologies are having on the political systems uh, on the social processes that underlie those political systems, and on the geopolitical power uh, around the world. The impact is truly massive, and the next few years will show transformation at a level that we haven't seen before in our history. Well, back in the 1990s, we used to say the internet is the future, and it was kind of tongue-in-cheek, uh, maybe a little bit funny. Uh, I think it's turning out that the prediction is actually accurate, and uh, I look forward to going through this transformation of our economy with you all. And uh, thank you very much for listening.